All right, guys, February is in the books, and it was a rough month for stocks. The S&P was down 3.64%. The NASDAQ was down 2.77%. Um, you know, a lot of people out there saying February tends to be a bad month for stocks, blah, blah, blah. Um, okay, so the positive for the month was that they only raised rates 0.25%, which I was actually surprised about. And I actually think that that's going to be an issue. Mo, did you find anything about consumer sentiment besides what I found? So I'm seeing consumer sentiment confidence declined in February. Okay, the confidence. the conference board. Okay. Yeah. Now I'm looking at the UMich, University of yep. Michigan, consumer sentiment was actually up from January to February. Um, and actually up a lot from February of 2022. Now guys, you might look at this and think this is great. But remember, the Fed is trying to fight inflation. I know what Mo's going to say next, so Mo, go ahead and say it. Look at the headline yeah, story. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Neil Kashkari comes out there and he says we need higher rates. And that goes back to you saying you were surprised by 25%. I think a lot of people are surprised that it was only 25 basis points, not yes. percent. That'd be incredible if they came out and said 25% increase. I'd be a very happy boy. Um, guys, when consumers are happy and excited, what do they do? They spend money. Yep. When consumers spend money, what happens? More people get hired, more jobs, wage inflation, blah, blah. That leads to inflation. If the Fed is trying to fight inflation, unfortunately, that has to come at the expense of growth and the expense of jobs. Mm -hmm. Right now, unemployment's in the three and a half, four percent range. It's sub four. The Fed doesn't like that. No. He, even Jerome Powell has said multiple times, we need to get this unemployment number higher. Yeah. Full unemployment, which is where inflation's where it's supposed to be, is between 5 and 6%. Yeah. Now, we've been spoiled lately because we see unemployment so low, mm -hmm. and we sit there and say, this stinks, you know, like, this is great, it would stink to have more people. Unfortunately, though, when you have lower unemployment, more people are out there getting jobs much easier, yeah. which means they get paid more money. As an, as an employer right now, I have to pay more money to somebody now than I did five years ago in order to keep them here. Right. The, the money we pay people just for doing things, I was like, why are we paying this much money? Well, you that's what to. inflation is. Yeah. That's what it is. Yep. Whether you see it because of a cost of living or because you have to pay them in order to keep them, it's no different. So that's the big thing on February. Neil Kishkari, who's from our area, by the way, yeah. he believes, I believe he is one of the hawks of the Fed who wants to have much larger jumps in the, 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 um, the Fed funds rate. I think him and James Bullard are the two most hawkish guys. But it's funny, you see Raphael Bostic, he's from Atlanta. Then you see uh, Loretta Mester from Cleveland, she's saying it. And you have Mary Daly from San Francisco, who is not a big proponent of raising interest rates. She's even saying, we need higher interest rates right now. Now, which one of those are on the voting? Are part of the voting committee? I know Mester's not. Mester's not anymore, not this year. Bullard's not either, is he? Bullard is not, I don't think, this year. Kashkari is, Bostic is, Daly, I think, is... Okay. So, because every year some of them get kicked off of vote, voting and, and whatnot. So it's not the same voters every single year. That's what we're talking about. So February was a down month. Now, obviously, when it comes to anything having to do with any sort of investment, every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. So I just want to correct it. So voting members this year are here. So James, uh, I'm sorry, Raphael Bostic and Mary Daly and Loretta Mester, those are the non-voting members. Then Thomas Barkin and Helen McCoolio, I never actually heard her name before. So those are the uh, people that are not voting this year. I just wanted to correct that one. Okay, so like I was saying, every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. The higher stock prices go, the less return you're taking in the future, mm -hmm. right? If, if something's going to be worth $1,000 in 10 years, if you pay $1,000 for today, you're making no return. If you pay $100 for it today, you're going to make 900% return, right? Yep. Now, some people might say 1,000, it's not 1,000, it's 900. But either way... What you need to do is embrace lower prices. I know that's very counterintuitive. You probably don't hear that very, you probably hear a lot of people say it, but the actions they do when stocks fall is totally different. Right. Remember, when stocks fall, the stories fall, follow where the stock price is going. All the negative stories follow when the stock falls, all the positive stories follow when it goes up. You've got to be able to sit there on your own and say, is this fundamentally true? is what they're saying fundamentally true and avoiding and negating all the good of the company. Same with the stock market. If you're out there investing in long-term ETFs, is the stock market going? Just think about that right now. Before stocks crash, is the stock market going away, Mo? No. 
If it does go away, is their biggest problem their 401k? No, you're not going to care about that. You're going to care about having a bunker. And trust me when I say this, there'll be a time in the future when there'll literally be people worried that their entire savings are going away. Probably more near future than you think, to be honest. I mean, yeah. we saw it in 2020. <laughs> people were like, I don't want this to go to zero. What, what does that even mean? Happened in 2007, yeah. happened in 2000, 2008 and 9. I had friends saying, I don't want to see this go to zero. I yeah. remember just going, are we really having this conversation? And it's funny, Buff, Buffett's letter right here that he talked about, he was like, there has never been a point in my investing career, which is almost 80 years right now, where I was not bullish on the U.S. economy. And he's like, I don't see that happening in any time in the near future either. It's going to, I'm always going to see better for America down the road. In the long run. In the long run. Of course. So in our community here, I announce every day my stock market to GDP ratio. I created this on my own going back to 1929 on the S&P. Okay. It basically just makes the ratio on GDP, stock market GDP to um, stock market market cap to GDP ratio. Based on history, we are currently 63% overvalued. Okay, this is just me using this math. And there's a lot of arguments to why it's okay to be high. It's not, as, not this overvalued. I get it. I've heard the arguments. I understand it completely. But let's go back and look at history here. Look at 2000, the tech bubble. The highest it got was 56.9%. So we're still higher today. After falling 20% last year, we're still higher today than we were at the peak of the tech bubble back in March of 2000. That's pretty scary. Now, what does that mean for the future? Well, going back, the average over a 10-year period is 6.6% increase without dividends. This does not include dividends. When we're undervalued by 30% or more, it's 10.9% return, right? Makes sense. If you pay less, you get more return. If you're overvalued by 30, or these, look at these numbers, 30% over, 40% over, 50% overvalued, the returns are all negative for the next 10 years. Now, does that mean it's going to happen for sure? Not necessarily. I mean, look at, look at, um, there are times when it can be, look at this. Back in 2017, we were 50% overvalued. And guess what? The stock S&P was at 2,800. It's currently at 4,000. Now, granted, that was six years ago. So it can still be irrational for long periods of time. But my guess is we've swung the pendulum. The pendulum is swinging, right? We're in this extreme euphoria still. Some way, shape, or form, we're over there. Maybe we're not all the way over here right now, but maybe we're like right here. Because guess what? I still see Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. I still see NFTs are gone, basically. NFTs not that are gone, gone, but people aren't talking about them like they used to. Nobody's talking about it. I mean, I even saw a story this the, today. Crypto. When I still see something in the top few headlines here on Yahoo, I know it's not over yet. Crypto ends February flat. I mean, it, just the fact that it's still being talked about like that tells me, okay, people are still interested in this crap. Yeah. So... Does this mean you should stop investing? Absolutely not. Because like I showed you six years ago, the S&P was a lot lower than this today and you could have gotten some gains and gotten some dividends along the way. The point is the dollar cost average. And sometimes you're going to overpay and sometimes you're going to underpay. But 20 or 30, 40 years from now, when you retire, guess what's going to happen? You're going to, you're going to invest it all along the way. When it was going up and down, up and down, you'd invest it all along the way. And you would have made this the entire time, which is beating 95% of actively managed mutual funds. Definitely. That's the big key. Now, if you want to buy individual stocks, by all means, join our community. We have a special $7 for seven days. You get all of our software. You get the full community access with thousands of people in there. $7 for seven days on everythingmoney.com. That's it. $1 a day. But, and you get every morning I announce this, the stock market GDP ratio. But guys, the bottom line is based on history, Stocks are very expensive right now. When you look at the 10-year cyclically adjusted P.E. ratio, what is that? That means taking the last 10 years of earnings and bringing it to today's price. We're currently at 29, 28.78. The historical average is 17. 17. So we're still, this still shows we're overpriced by another 50 or 60% based on this. Right. So it's all consistently saying the same message. Now, do we feel it right now? No, because stock prices have stayed up. We still have a booming economy. We, booming economy. we have 3.5, 3.6, 3 3.7% unemployment, but that's what happens. And I'm not trying to be this fudster where I'm starting to put fear and certainty in doubt. No, I'm just looking at it saying, guys, stock prices are high. Because when stock prices are high, it means everybody is assuming the best of all situations. 
as an investor for us, we want to assume reasonable. We still are bullish on the entire U.S. economy for the next 20 years, but that doesn't mean that you buy every stock based on the most egregious estimations of value. I just thought of something. If we were not bullish on the economy, we would not be buying stocks in any capacity, period. We wouldn't, we wouldn't even be looking at Google and saying, oh, it's cheap. It's $90 right now. I would be, never. We wouldn't be doing options. We wouldn't be doing trading. I wouldn't be investing in real estate in the U.S. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> That's the thing. But remember, there's different ways to look at everything. And my goal is to make reasonable assumptions. There are five or 10,000 stocks out there. My goal is to find 20 or 30 that fit my criteria that I can own for a very long period of time. Yeah. I just need to be patient on the pricing of them. That's all we're trying to teach here. And last year was a great year for value investors in the sense of seeing prices get close to where they need to go. Because remember, look at this. Look how bad it got last year. Look, we have a, you know 103%, 103% overvaluation. We're down a lot from there. But those were numbers we haven't seen in a long, long time. Long time. And that's the point of investing. It's about being patient. The hard part about investing is putting money in when everybody says is the wrong time to do it and buying whenever and, and buying whenever when and not buying when everybody says it's the right time to do it. Right. But that's really what it takes to be successful. If you follow our channel, if you follow this whole community, you will learn that when people are spe- whenever I see bad news about it, look at look at um Facebook. Yeah. When it was at eighty eight dollars a share, this yeah. company is dead. It literally doubled in like three months. Now all of a sudden people are like, this is the best company ever. And now it's starting to fall and you're gonna start seeing people talk about the negativity about Facebook and Meta over and over again. Mm-hmm. Oh, crap. It's up today? Yeah. A little bit. See, that's the thing. We truly root on lower prices. Not because we want negative things to happen to people. We want to be able to buy great companies at great prices because we know that over a 20 or 30 year period with a great U.S. economy and a free country that we have, every, most companies will end up being better 20 or 30 years from now than they are today. And that's the key. So don't look at month to month reactions, month to month swings in the market. Look at them as opportunities. That's the whole point about everything. Exactly. All right, guys. $7 for seven days, everythingmoney.com. Subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much.